about a police force of 10 came in the building and uh, we both sides had decided on a peaceful removal but uh, I would not completely describe it as that. It uh, turned in, we had, uh, the 22 of us had locked arms and decided that we were going to be carried out and uh, unfortunately it evolved to something a little, little stronger but uh, nobody was really hurt. Did they threaten you with any reprisals for your occupation of the building? Well, they said uh, court injunctions could be filed and then it, it would be in the hands of, of the civil authorities. And also, uh, they threatened us with taking away scholarships and financial aid. And uh, they also said every student in there could be put on student probation. But so far, none of those things have been carried out? Uh, none so far. And uh, they didn't right, come right down and say that these things were going to take place, they just used, were used as threats. Makes some sense. The resolution that we presented to, um, to the uh, council at our school was picked apart because they didn't like I think our teachers have spoken. They do not want the interference from the outside. They do want, and we want, a strong classroom teacher organization that represents the wishes and reflects the will of our teachers. And you feel that membership in the NEA is uh, interference from the outside? Of course, the voter who will suffer most by the precinct convention minutes coming in late are the supporters of George McGovern. The rule is that when minutes of the convention come in late, neither delegates nor the precinct chairman will be seated at the senatorial district convention. County Chairman Earl Luna says that's due to McGovern chairman being inexperienced, but at least some McGovern people have the uneasy feeling they've been had. Until perhaps yesterday, they were optimistic. Today, they're a little bit confused. I think, basically, Saturday night when uh, the permanent precinct chairman uh, were given their packets with the minutes, uh, forms for minutes, uh, and they lost the election for a permanent precinct chairman. For instance, a McGovern person won that election and took over the convention. The, we heard reports that some temporary precinct chairman took their materials and went out to count the tapes. Uh, on their voting machines. And uh, as far as I know, um, those where our people were furnished the forms for the minutes, they turned them in within the allotted time. They were either given to the county clerk or mailed within the allotted time. Uh, will be accredited and how many won't be until 
we get to the Senatorial District Convention on Saturday at 2 o'clock where they'll be given their tickets so they won't be. He comes into the net all the time, um, and uh, so I, I know what to expect from his game. Um, but even so, it's not easy to judge exactly what I'm going to do because it depends on how I'm going to serve. And if I serve reasonably well, I think um, I'll be coming in almost all the time. If I don't serve that well, I'll probably stay back some of the time. Well, I think uh, when I play Cliff that uh, I'll have to keep attacking him all the time, try not to uh, get in long rallies with him. He's, I think, a bit stronger off the uh, ground. He has better ground strokes than I do. And he is more patient in the sense that he's willing to uh, work the point over and make me run and then set up the point before coming to the net. And I don't usually do that. I usually like to get to the net immediately and uh, go for the volley. And I'll, I'll try and stay away from his two-handed backhand as much as possible. Is Ash's serve your main concern? Yes, I think so. It's, uh, when his serve goes, it's very difficult to return because he hits it very fast and it's difficult to see if it goes to the backhand or the forehand. Uh, I hope that he doesn't serve that well and uh, I can move around quickly and, uh, and ret retrieve shots and, uh, and go for the passing shots. That is about my game. Uh, I don't think it'll last too long. One way or the other. Um, Tom and I never have long matches. Uh, Tom um, will probably be trying to uh, move me around the court a lot. And I'll be trying to uh, keep Tom from moving me around the court a lot. <laughs> so uh, I'll be working on trying to get my serve going fairly well. And I'll be going for my shots um, fairly quickly. Well, no, that's one thing I, you know, I've told all the, all the people, they asked me about the fight. As far as the other guy, as far as, you know, when he gets in the ring with you, he can punch. So I give him respect. I give all fighters respect. I don't care if we're 100, uh, 102, 110 pounds. He punches twice his weight anyway. Anyway, if a 200 pound fall on you, don't get hurt. So if you're in condition, uh, you got nothing to worry about. So I give him respect. You speak with experience, having been a fighter for a number of years. Uh, do you get mad in the ring? Do you treat it as a profession, like going to work? No, no. If you get angry when you're in the ring, uh, you lose. You know, say you lose your cool. Well, nine times out of ten, you get yourself hurt or get beat pretty bad in there. So all I can say, uh, stay calm. If you want to get angry, wait till you get, wait till you knock them out. If you can, if you knock them out. I wait till the fight over and then get angry. And then I'm not be dead about it.
Luther and Linda Kennedy sit in this waiting room at Baylor Hospital night and day. They've been waiting here for two weeks, ever since their three-year-old daughter Tanya came close to drowning in an apartment swimming pool. Although the child was rescued, she's been unconscious with suspected brain damage. So her parents just wait hour after hour, allowed to visit Tanya only five minutes every two hours in the intensive care unit. The little girl is their only child, but doctors don't know if she'll live. Mrs. Kennedy quit her waitress job two days before the accident because Tanya begged her to stay at home. The father had only been on his job a few weeks. The Kennedys say they don't know how they can pay the huge medical bills. Neighborhood efforts to raise funds have only yielded about $500. I've got, I've got all the faith in the world because I know that uh, Jesus is watching over and, uh, and and what has happened, it, it has been a, a miracle. What do you mean by that? I mean that she is breathing now. I mean just the fact of her breathing, it's a miracle in itself. And I've got the faith that she'll be all right. How are you and your wife both bearing up under this, with the terrible pressure and worry? God just giving us strength. It's going to take a long time, it seems, for your little girl to recover. Are you going to be able to afford the treatment? The, the fact of the money is, right now is not important to me. It's, it's the, the little girl is the first thing. And, and when she is better, I'll think about the money later. Three-year-old Tanya has been inside the intensive care unit for two weeks now. And day after day, her parents wait in this waiting room for their five-minute visit with their little girl, hoping that somehow she'll show a sign of getting well. But the only thing is, with money running out and a $4,500 debt hanging over their heads, Luther and Linda Kennedy not only have to worry whether or not their child will live, sooner or later they'll have to meet the mounting financial burden of Tanya's accident. Martha McIntyre, Channel 8 News on the Move. What are you going to do now? What would you do in the service? I was a heavy equipment operator in the service. What do you want to do now? Computer operator. Have you had any kind of training in this? Yeah, I went to school for it. Well, when you were in, in the service? When I was in the service, yes. Do you really think this is going to be able to help you find a job? I hope so. How do you how do you feel about this kind of a this kind of a setup? Do you think this is a good thing for, for servicemen that are getting out? Well, there's a lot of jobs here that they need you, you know, they'll use you. Well, you know, there's been a lot of talk for a long time about servicemen that they spend their time in Nam and and uh, come back to the United States, and lo and behold, they're suddenly they're unemployables. Uh, did any of the guys that you know that were in the service ever talk about that? Yeah, a lot of them went back in because they couldn't find a job. I know when I was in, they'd go back in and they said they couldn't find a job when it was out.
where the forms were taken and we were furnished with the forms from the downey county democratic headquarters we made an effort to include all the necessary information in our own forms and submitted them to the county clerks within the appointed time what kind of action are you going to take about it then well we're i guess we'll just have to see what happens There's no question but what the evidence makes it abundantly clear from Portland, from Milwaukee, from Denver, from uh, countless other school districts that interference from the NEA results in cash curtailment and a confidence crisis and ultimately in a reduction in the quality of education. James Jennings has been nominated. Objection. Uh, Dr. Estes, I have no choice. Other nominations for the president of the Board of Education. I think we heard the doctor. Uh, my I'm, ab I'm shocked at the <clears throat> statement by the superintendent, this obvious attempt to interfere with the affairs of the classroom teachers of Dallas. I think it points up what the issue really is, whether Dallas teachers are going to uh, operate their association or whether we're going to turn it over to the superintendent of schools. He uh, kept insisting that the NEA would interfere as it had interfered in other cities he listed. This is, this is, an, this is the wrong... Uh, this is an incorrect statement. The National Education Association and these various state associations never come into a local school district unless they're invited by the teacher association. Another great source of ocean pollution, which is the high seas, is oil. We transport the most immense quantities of oil around the world every day, every year, and inevitably some of this, not by accident, but by deliberate design, just washing tanks, that kind of thing, gets into the ocean some two million tons a year. Nobody knows for sure what the effect of this is, but they do know that in some places it's killed marine life very badly. 